So, I mean, in its most simple form, the Enneagram is just a personality um, descriptor, numbers one through nine. Every number describes a particular autopilot personality or particular coping mechanisms that we all do. How we cope through life, get what we feel like we're needing. Every type does that differently. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the Alliance Podcast, a transformative journey into the world of wellness and philanthropy. I'm your host, Dr. Nikhil Sharma, and I'm so grateful to have you guys here with us today. All right, well, let's get the show started. Uh, today we have a great topic, the Enneagram Heart uh, Triad, uh, and we are welcoming back a uh, special guest, Melinda Olson, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist and founder and in- Invitera Counseling and co-founder of Havenly Counseling Collective. Welcome, Melinda. Great to have you Thank back you. here with us today. Thanks. So happy to be here. All right. Well, before we get started, do you mind just giving us a little bit of background about the work that you do? Yeah. Um, so I am I'm an Enneagram therapist. I'm an Enneagram obsessed person. <laughs> Enneagram <laughs> <Yeah>. two. <laughs> Um, And so I interweave that with all of my uh, therapeutic work. So I like to bill myself as your resident Enneagram therapist, um, because I really love helping people go deeper into their Enneagram work beyond what the types are. I really think that the Enneagram is just a transformative tool. And I think it just creates such a beautiful path toward transformation, which um, might, you know, when, when we're on that path, we might not look the same as we did in the very beginning in terms of what our type is. So I love watching that process. Um, and I'm also obsessed with creating community and care for helpers, for people who care for others. And then, you know, just for my community at large. So that's what I'm obsessed with. Yeah, we can tell very, very passionate. That's beautiful. Uh, so yeah, thank you for being here with us today. So before yeah. we dive right into the hard triads, for those yeah. that are new uh, to the podcast and new to the Enneagram, do you mind just giving us a quick overview of what the Enneagram is and sure. what the triads are? Yeah. So, I mean, in its most simple form, the Enneagram is just a personality um, descriptor, no, uh, numbers one through nine. Um, every um, every number describes a particular um what we call like an autopilot personality or particular coping mechanisms that we all do, um, constellations of coping mechanisms. And so when we talk about um, how we cope through life, get what we feel like we're needing, every type does that differently. And so one of the ways that the Enneagram is divided or split is into what you call triads, right? So we have three um, types per triad. So we have the body triad, um, which are eights, nines and ones and uh, they tend to jam around um, uh, anger like the emotion of anger right Um, we have heart types which are twos threes and fours um, and we tend to deal with i'm a two um, we tend to deal with things like sadness and shame right so um, that's what we tend to organize around and then you have the head types which Nick, I know you are. Um, so we have five, That's sixes, seven. and sevens, right? <laughs> yeah, and we call that the fear triad. So uh, it's the head triad, the fear triad. So, um, and every triad has different um, different themes that they uh, have to navigate as they're on their transformational journey and different coping mechanisms that they lean into in order to get, you know, what their personality really thinks that they're needing. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's very well said. So let's, you know, I know you have such a great bond with this specific triad. You, like you said, you are in type two. And, yeah. um, you know, why don't we go over? Yeah, so these, so the so the hard triad, yes, there are a lot of shame-based um, uh, emotions. Mm. And so yes. that shows up a little bit differently in each one of these uh, types. Yes. Uh, so why don't we start with type two and, and talking a little bit about how, how that goes with them. Yeah, so... Um, type two, uh, and I, I like to talk about shame and sadness, and that's kind of a Beatrice Chestnut like addition that I really support. So type two, uh, they tend to be called the helpers, but I like to kick that out the window because I think that that's a t- total stereotype. I think they're befrienders. Two's autopilot is all about 
getting you to like me, getting you on my side, getting you on board with loving me because I'm so great in whatever way I try to be great so that people will love me so that people will, you know, be on my side, give me what I'm needing. It's a really like twos really try to get what they're needing indirectly by making other people feel positively about them in whatever you know way that they organize around. So that's really the theme of the two. One of the ways that happens is helping other people, but that's not the only way. And definitely like not every type of two does that. So it's, it could be through what we call seduction, like classic seduction. It could be through um, being nice and sweet and kind it could be through bringing you a casserole. It could be through being very competent. It doesn't matter. But um, either way, we really are obsessed with making other people like us. We live our lives outside of ourselves. And so we don't understand our own hearts and our own needs, right? Because we're so focused on other people's needs. Um, so that's really the uh, one of the issues of Enneagram 2. So that's... Right. So you guys kind of have this feeling thing. where um, that you don't if, if there's some sort of rejection or something along those lines where you don't you don't feel yeah. you're good enough at times. Is that right? Like, or does that? Yeah, all the time. Right. And and I feel like that's kind of that might be almost in our shadow or our subconscious. I think I think some of us are really aware of that, um, but others of us are not. And so oftentimes we operate in the world thinking we know better how to help and care for other people. So sometimes we're operating in this pride space, but at the bottom of that, as we're trying to be in whatever way, more than who we are, more special, um, more significant, more um, likable, um, what we really uh, don't come into much contact with, but definitely is running the show, is this feeling of not being good enough, which is why sad and shame is something that twos really struggle with. You know, and it's like I oftentimes I've gone through those feelings as well, yeah. that not yes. feeling good enough. And again, for yeah. people that are out there, it doesn't matter what your type is. You will likely uh, experience, you know, uh, something from each type and each personality, each triad. And you're supposed to. Yeah. You're meant to be like an ideal version of somebody would be someone who has a balanced head, heart and body type. Absolutely. You know, yes. so you're uh, anyone that's listening today, you could be likely picking up stuff like, Hey, yeah, that, that really resonates with me, you know, mm -hmm. which is good because it likely there's something that's going to be resonating with everybody. And I often, yes. uh, you know, think about, especially that where we're don't feel good enough. And I, then I think about not good enough for who, from what, like, for where is this good enough feeling coming from? Like, what are we Great comparing question. this to, you know, and it's like yes. something that's been again, ingrained in us from a very young age uh, to that, you know, society has been structured. Like there's these laws that there aren't even the, like real laws, right? But no, it's something yeah. that's just made up. And, I, yes. and it's like, uh, it, it, what's great about this uh, self discovery journey is that when you realize that each individual is on their own little path and it's, yes. uh, uh, it's up to us to, um, you know, own that path and have, you know, go your own way, you know, that's when the real awakening kind of occurs. And you're uh, like, yo, oh, man, like you start <laughs> feeling different, you know, I mean, more empowered, yes. so it's nice. So you're not, Absolutely. You're, you're not the, the, that feeling of not feeling good enough, uh, starts to like dissipate a little bit, I would say, <laughs> you know, what I mean, because it does. It's like, it does. I, yeah. I'm enjoying the, there's a lot of parts of me that I do enjoy. So it's nice to, uh, uh, you know, start understanding that but yeah twos um <laughs> you know they really want to help please people it, it makes them feel they good do. you know yes yes so it makes them feel good and and needed and and significant yeah All right so what can like twos you know i guess how can they help balance that aspect oh. out a little for themselves you know <laughs> great question love that that's the best yeah. one. so i think that one of the things that there's so many things but i think one of the major themes because twos are such outward oriented types we focus on other people the gravity of our existence is on others right so if you think about gravity right like almost like a blanket with something heavy on it. It's almost like we roll toward the thing that has the most gravity, right? And part of a two's work is to flesh themselves out authentically so they have more gravity, 
right? And so they start to focus more internally on themselves and what they need. And actually, I have this by my desk because like I said, I'm a two. And um, for viewers out there, I'm holding up a picture Mm -hmm. um, of a single dot and a very elaborate squibble. Mm -hmm. And the single dot underneath says what I wanted to need. And the scribble is what I need. And basically, it's just what we think we need is so simple, but what we really need is incredibly elaborate and twos are not in touch with that. So shifting that gravity towards ourself, going internal, understanding our own feelings, dreams, thoughts, all of that is part of the work that I do with twos. It's really shifting that gravity towards ourselves. Right. And it's like, again, when we feed more into ourselves, when we understand more of who we really are, we're better able to help others, you know what I mean? In a more sustained manner, right? It's really incredible when uh, you can understand that. Like the people start thinking, oh, you're being selfish or you're doing this. No, it's more Mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm trying to spend some time getting to know myself a little bit better so that I can show up better, not just for myself and for my family, for all those that are connected to me. Absolutely. And that's really the point. And a lot of twos do fear that this is such a selfish thing to do. But what I like to point out to them is in personality, like in your autopilot, the things that you're doing in order to care for other people, like, yeah, that's partially pure. But let's be honest, it's an indirect way of getting people to meet our needs. And that's not actual generosity. Like everybody thinks twos are so generous. We are not. We are not. It's (laughs) not because it's all a ploy to get our needs met when we don't know what they are. So it's, it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult web we weave. Yeah. There's a little bit of manipulation maybe that's there. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I think when we shift our focus to understanding what we need and that can be hard because choose the experience our emotions like a roller coaster. It's a very chaotic experience inside. So we feel feelings, but we don't tend to really know or understand why they come up or what's happening or when they're going to come up. So the image I bring up for twos that seems to really resonate is being on a roller coaster blindfolded. You experience all the feelings, but you don't know when the drop is or when all the turns are. And we have to get to know our insides to get off the roller coaster, to really understand our feelings and then understand what we need and be direct about it. Right. Instead of manipulating others to get that met when we might not even know what those needs are. Right. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, well said. The whole thing. Right. Thanks. Um, so now, how, how does this, how does shame and uh, these emotions show up for a type three? Oh, great question. So, type three. So, we can go over, uh, just to talk a little bit about type three, if that's all right. But um, so type threes are outward oriented types as well, just like twos. Actually, there are a lot of similarities, but threes are very like go get them action oriented because what they want is approval, right? They're going for success. They're going for applause. They're going for approval. Like, yeah, you're the best. Go type three. You rock right? I, that's what they're living for. So whereas for twos, that's really love, liking, like being liked for threes, it really is more about that being seen as successful. And so what um, Beatrice Chestnut says around threes is, you know, emotions, um, they kind of get in the way for threes to being that successful self. Um, they're not, uh, they like to be very efficient to get stuff done, to be successful, right? And so they tend to shuck them out the window. So threes underdo emotion. They underdo sadness and shame. If you asked a three, like, what's your experience of shame and sadness? They'd be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what I find in my practice, right? So yeah, you'll find like- threes working really hard. They like to be, they like to be admired. Is that what you would say? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the admiration applause. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's how they they kind of show up. So what are some things, how how can they better balance themselves uh, to kind of uh, 
be able to feel, you know, some more emotion, you know? Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think first of all, because threes work, it's that they're, they're the workaholics of the Enneagram. They're action oriented, right? They move quick, quick, quick. Like they want to make sure that they're kind of getting, getting shit done. Uh, they really need to start slowing down. Right. So um, being unproductive Four, three, though hard, is incredibly important. Like starting to slow down because they can't even get in touch with their internals, right? They they can't even get in touch with their insides if they're going so fast, right? And so that's like, I mean, torture for a three, but <laughs> all of growth paths are torture. But it really is, uh, it really is about like tuning inside to their actual desires instead of focusing so much on what will get them admired okay right does that make sense it does make sense yes yeah 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 so i think um you know slowing down to actually tune into themselves asking questions like do i really like this thing do i really like to do that i don't know like right. what do i what are my hates what are my likes like what what does that really mean like what is my true goal in life like how do I really want to live? Is it really for the admiration of others or doing these things I might not even enjoy breaking my neck doing it? Or is there a different way? And in that slowing down, they start to make more contact with their very sensitive hearts. Okay. Right. And, you know, I, again, it goes back to coming back into your, into your inner self, right? Yes, like absolutely. focusing on, you know, what it is that you want, you know, yes. um, uh, oftentimes our autopilot, as you said earlier, just is like, can be go, 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 go. I, I want to be admired. This is the way it's supposed to be. And you're not really, yeah. you know, supposed to be for who, for what, you know, like yeah. again, you yeah. know, so it's kind of like, totally. uh, you know, I, I again there's times where I feel like I've been in that mode where I want to be you know I'd want some admiration and I think that's Absolutely. okay it's okay to have some of that again it's all balance it's realizing mm -hmm. you know uh is it coming truly from within that yes. uh this is you know something that I you know I've worked hard for and you know I am appreciating the admiration that I'm getting or I'm Absolutely. doing everything just for admiration purposes yes <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, threes are so good at tuning in to what whatever community they're a part of deems successful, like either their family or, you know, whatever communities they're in. But that do they actually think like the three themselves, do they actually think that that's what success means or success looks like? Right. right. Again, it is tuning into that inner self instead of working so hard to get that outside admiration. So. All right. And then yeah. how, can we talk a little bit about the type four personality? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love type fours as well. Yeah. They're all great. <laughs> I love them all. Love all. Exactly. I was like, you're in your I approach. Love you love, you know what I mean? You, I do. You, I you mean, I'm a hard type. I love them all. <laughs> yeah, it's good. No, but see, it's important because again, when we're most balanced, we have a little bit of each in us, right? Absolutely. So you're just loving yourself. That's all. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So fours kind of go, um, they cut a little different than twos and threes, right? So whereas twos and threes are outward oriented, fours are very inward oriented. You know, they tend to have a fairly good idea about how they feel precisely how they feel. Right. Um, and so they tend to kind of focus more on their internals, but not all of their internals, just like the parts that they don't think are great or like the emotions that are suffering emotions, right? Like they tend to focus inward and really focus on things that might be wrong with them, um, ways that they're not good enough or things that other people have that they wish they did, um, but don't. It's this longing, like fours um, experience this deep longing, right? So um, the internal experience for fours and that internal churn is very different than twos and threes. Um, they kind of shut out the outside world um, and kind of focus inward. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think part of that, uh, the reason in order, uh, the reason that they do that is because they want to differentiate themselves. They feel different, right? They're the individualists. So they feel very different. They want to set themselves apart so, right. or often feel set apart. All right. And so um, what are some areas that, they're, that, that, that they can use or 
to try to help in their, you know, growth and development? Yeah, I mean, so the thing about fours, fours are probably the most therapized group of the Enneagram. So first, I'm going to say that. So you'll like the majority of a lot of therapists. What are the fours? Sorry, what are the fours known as? Like they're uh, the individualists. The individualists. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know, yeah. I think. Does that resonate for any? Yeah, it does. It, it does. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. That resonates with <laughs> yeah. several fours that I'm associated with for sure. Yeah, 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 and it makes sense, right? Like every every theme is around. If we think about you know that shame and sadness, it comes out in different ways. And for fours, right, and they're not thinking that they're good enough. They set themselves apart or aside and want to kind of work to be um, special on an individual level. So like I'm special because I'm different or, you know, I'm, I'm me being different makes me special. So that's kind of what they like, they churn into. And so it's, um, it can be really hard for a four. Um, like they, they're the ones that have the most distinctive experiences of sadness and shame and probably the most direct experiences of sadness and shame so much so that they have a hard time getting out of those feelings. They, favor those feelings as a po- um, as opposed to maybe more positive feelings like hope or joy. So yeah, they overdo those feelings. And so um, to answer your question about growth, I think, you know, one of the first things that needs to happen is kind of this recognition that their internals might not be 110% accurate in terms of how the world is and who they are in the world, Right because they need to start balancing their internals with kind of the people in their lives that care about them and what they say. Um, and so, yeah, there's, um, there's a way in which the gravity needs to shift a little more uh, balanced between external and internal um, feelings of, um, of who they are and how they define themselves because they think they're really negative, but, in fact, they're human beings and they're both beautiful and have issues like the rest of us. And they tend to focus on the issues instead of the beauty. So they need to start integrating that in. Hey guys, for more resources on the Enneagram Heart Triad, including our blog, which has more insight on today's topic, please make sure to visit our website at www.alinusworld.com and make sure to follow us on our social media pages on Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok with the handle at Alinus World. And to energetically donate to our YouTube channel, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now back to our podcast. So, you know, I think we have a good understanding really of like just the individuals, uh, like how each type, is, you know, individually presents themselves. Yeah. Now, you know, a lot of our lives are based on relationships and, you know, uh, each individual at times, uh, you know, when we're in relationships, um, we can, be, there's unhealthy uh, qualities that can be exhibited. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so each one of these, especially uh, being that they're part of this, the hard type and they're thinking with their emotions, um, uh, what are some, uh, I guess, uh, I guess things that these types need to be aware of uh, when they're in relationships and that they can kind of identify that, Hey, um, I'm that I need to be, you know, there's something not right here. I'm, I must be doing something, um, you know, so that they can like, maybe take a step back uh, mm. and just being aware of some key factors or key traits that they tend to exhibit when they're in unhealthy, you know, relationship patterns. Yeah, yeah. So I think for twos, it um, the most uh, the the biggest thing I see for twos is just too much focus on their relationships. Um, they will just focus all their energy on their partner or yeah. people, and to the detriment of themselves, and it can cause some issues um, because they're going to try to help people in ways that the person never asked for. Right. And then to start to get resentful, like I helped you in all these ways and you're not even grateful. And I'm like, well, did they ask for that help? Yeah. Resent, like resentment is something that you need to work on internally for yourself. It usually means you've overextended your boundaries, right? Or allowed somebody to cross you, your boundaries. Can you say that again? Because that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Resentment is something that you need to work on yourself, right? Because usually what that means is you've crossed your own boundaries or allowed somebody to cross your boundaries. And for twos, 
who live in resentment a lot, we need to understand that we need to create boundaries and not cross them to help others or care for others or go outside of ourselves. And that happens so much in relationships. It's like you do it without even thinking. And then you look behind you and you're like, oh, that was a boundary. And I only know that because I'm pissed, right? That <laughs> right. they didn't care for me, right? In the way that I wanted them to. So yeah, and I think it's important, like, you know, we know when resentment starts building up in us, like, and it's yes. it, it, oftentimes that we just stuff it down, you know, inside. And then, you know, we just like think it's going to be okay. Or, oh, you know, that's, that oh. happens in marriages or that happens. Yes. Oh, you know, yeah. That's normal. You know what I mean? Like, Recipe I, for <laughs> I know, so bad. Like, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I yes, was just I thinking do. about that. It's like, people yes. just often think that it's normal. Like, this is what goes on. Like, and the problem is it, what it's I've so realized bad. this as I've grown up and, 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 and I realized, no, Nick, that is only happening in your small subset of group of friends and the yes. family that you're surrounding yourself with. There is Absolutely. a big world out there. There's 6 yes. billion people. I, <laughs> you know, you realize that what you think is like, <laughs> oh, that's okay to occur. No. You know, yeah. it's again, our thoughts are not necessarily true. And I think we need no. to re, no. um, you know, just uh, think about that for one second. Realize all your thoughts aren't necessarily true. And when you think of it, when you we realize that, you know, we can go, we can move forward with, Hey, maybe something needs to change or, you yeah. know, this yes. isn't normal. Cause I shouldn't be Absolutely. feeling like this for this yes. prolonged period. You know, yes. where did yes. I learn that this is normal? And again, we learn what yes. normal is through our just immediate circle and our families and how we were yes. growing up. Yes. It doesn't mean it was the right way for you, you know? So yeah, uh, absolutely. Right. And, absolutely. And we evolve. We're, 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 we, we change and, you know, we're, we're supposed we're, to, we're, we're supposed to exactly exactly we're supposed yes. to right we're supposed to so All that's right. the biggest thing i see with yeah. twos right. i mean and i've experienced that too so hopefully that helps some of your two listeners for sure and then yeah how about our type threes, type threes? oh yeah yeah so usually i only see threes in therapy for two reasons one they've either burned out or two their partner spouse whatever has hauled them into therapy and when that happens right? It's usually because the three is not really in contact with their feelings. They're working too much. They're really trying to be that successful person, but they're not tuned into their um, kind of their EQ, like their emotional IQ in order to connect with their partner, right? And right. so usually I'm seeing threes have a really hard time like connecting relationally, even though they're heart types, even though they're so sensitive, right. they have a very hard time kind of getting to that emotional nurturing level and that kind of emotional ability to um, hear their partner and connect in that way. So that's usually what I find with my threes and relationships. It's really hard. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. That makes sense. And then yeah. we have our uh, type fours. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So type fours, um, again, the most therapized type on the Enneagram. I see them a lot in relationships um, when it's almost like, they're so focused inward, it's hard for them to tune into their partner. Interestingly, yeah. yeah. So if their partner has a different experience or something else going on, it's very hard for the four to kind of step outside of themselves enough to um, navigate that with them or to kind of understand that experience. Now, Fours are great at not being judgmental, right? I, I think that that's something that I've noticed about fours that I love, but it really is that piece about that outward, that lack of outward orientedness that um, tends to be an issue. And then the other thing I see a lot is it's just hard for them to step out of their own shame and their own sadness in order to, so that's usually what they're stuck in. Say a, a, a partner says, hey, like I'm having a really hard time when you do X. A four could be like, oh, I did X. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. There's something wrong with me. Why do I always do that downward, downward, downward? Well, what happens? The person who brought that need forward gets lost. They get lost in the four, just spiraling downward and inward. And so that is a dynamic I see a lot with fours in relationships. Okay. All right. No. 
Well, you know, and then, you know, relationships are a big deal. And, you know, obviously how we're showing up uh, every day for ourselves, it's important yeah. for us to be just these, having these tools of being aware of how, how our interactions are with others. Yeah, and absolutely. it's important for our partners and others that we're associated with to <laughs> yeah. understand who we are, you know, so we yes. can better communicate and interact and have more yes. fulfilling conversations, more fulfilling relationships, you know, I think, yeah, of course. you know, for all those that are listening out there, yes, it's important for you to um, understand who you are, but hopefully you're also picking up uh, some traits of people that are around you and mm -hmm. understanding like, you know, hey, maybe that's why mom acts this way. Well, maybe I need to communicate with her like this or be more patient with her about, you know, certain when she's stressed. Now I know how she is, you know, at a certain type of way. So it's just it's just all beautiful stuff. I feel, you know, the more yeah, we learn and, and it's not that you're necessarily going to learn every little detail. You're not going to necessarily figure out what your Enneagram type is, you know, today per se, but hopefully you're figuring out some things about yourself and how you're showing up in a certain way. And yes. then that just, you know, helps you progress and improve and help balance yourself because, Absolutely. Um, you know, that's really, really is the goal. Uh, and these days, especially with mental health being really, really, you know, uh, on the rise or poor mm. mental health being on the rise, yes. uh, it, it's important to understand that, um, you know, the times in society is changing and it's obviously there's something going on where more and more people are being affected and it, in a negative kind of way. And yeah. in, instead of uh, us hoping for change to come from somewhere outside, yes. which it's never going to come, no. it's gotta come, it's gotta come within us, each individual, like it just starts with yourself. I, you know, mm -hmm. you realize it's, and, and if you can optimize who you are because yes. you're the ceo of your own body you can only control your thoughts your, your emotions your actions yep. that's it there's nothing yep. else that you can control but if all of us started doing that that would amount to tremendous change be huge. you know be so right huge. It'd, it'd be just and there's been more of a push now right for each individual to start focusing on their own mental health and their just Absolutely. mental being, you know, we often work out all the time. We get our muscles all big and do all that, but we're not focusing on mental fitness enough. And that comes first mm -hmm. with, right. Just yes. becoming more aware of like who we are. So you know, that's why all these uh, self-discovery techniques, and obviously we are big homers of the Enneagram and yes. uh, that as a method for that. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, you, you, and you probably see why we do love it so much and passionate about it because it's, um, very easy to see yourself in each one of these types of situations, right? So, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the one other thing we wanted to kind of maybe touch up on was that because mental health has been become, you know, more of a crisis, uh, so people are becoming more and more stressed, right? And mm, each yes. each individual acts a certain way when they are stressed. Uh, so um, with each one of these types, can you maybe just go over some of the traits or, that they need to be aware of uh, when they end up in these, when adversity hits them um, and how they tend to respond and maybe yeah. how they can improve that a little bit for themselves? Yeah, so I mean, I think that what I've experienced is that every, every type, they kind of experience um, some adversity until they hit a wall um, that makes change necessary. So I'm going to describe how people look before they hit the wall. Um, so for twos, I think what happens is just they grow in that resentment we were talking about, right? Like they, they get angrier and angrier. They're on that roller internally or um, more numb inside, um, more sad um, or they kind of go into deflation with that shame, right? So that starts to grow and grow and grow. And they're on that roller coaster with the blindfold. They're like, I have all these feelings and it's, you know, I'm so resentful. Um, I read somewhere that um, Enneagram twos can kind of look like that nagging mother um, right. when they're in their like very unhealthy state. So yeah, that is definitely a space that um, twos can get into. So um, and then they, they tend to um, get into a lot of controlling behaviors, like controlling other people, right? They kind of tend into that eight a little. They can tend into the four as well, um, where they feel a lot, but they also kind of go into the control of the eight. So um, 
kind of manipulating people to do their will. And when people aren't meeting their needs, the resentment grows and um, until eventually something breaks. And then I they end up in my office. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, they come see you for sure. Right, right. right. Or or their yeah. like, kid is like, you need to go to therapy or we're cutting contact, right? right? Like it can get really dramatic depending on how long it takes for the two to kind of tune into themselves. And type yeah. threes? Yeah, type threes, again, I find that um, they just numb out. Like, yeah. you know, it's just they they do more and more. The threes that land in my office, I find like right beforehand, they've either experienced like a, a hike in anxiety, which you've mentioned, like high anxiety, but they think that the way to deal with that is to just do more stuff. So even their like vacations are productive. I, I, I could tell you so many just stories about threes that thought like this vacation could have been improved by reading five self-help books or like five, you know, self-improvement books. and. Right. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. I'm going to have right. this schedule to make sure my vacation yeah. is as relaxing, productively relaxing. As productively relaxed. I like that. Yeah, no, it's true. It's because, like, yeah, they, they can't just be, you know, I mean? no, they just can't be. <laughs> they cannot. And it's very hard. And so that kind of gets yeah. picked up to a frenzied pace. And so the right. wall is usually like burnout, debilitating panic attacks. Sometimes it's even like health issues because they've somaticized. Mm, all of yeah. their emotions like they've taken sure. all of their feelings into their body and it's causing issues mm -hmm. um so that that's what i find they just become more and more numbed out to that sensitive sensitive heart they have right and just for people to understand that you know stress and internalizing stress and resentment oh, it will certainly show up in, in the physical aspect of things oh, again yeah. i dealt with that a lot in my yeah. hospital yeah. training and liver failure Absolutely. and people uh you know you know eat overeating then you know turning to other addictions you know because yes. you can't that pain that uh, those emotions internalized they have to be you know that has to be channeled somewhere or or yes. if you're going to keep suppressing it it's it's going to you you're using other substances or other devices to you know suppress that and that leads to yes. poor health outcomes and you know Absolutely. people can certainly you know die from that so mm -hmm. uh very important for you to uh understand the importance of not internalizing such emotion pain stress you yes. know there's a there's certainly poor outcomes uh that will occur for you know all of us you know who do that uh and, yes. and so it's important to go to somebody uh, like Melinda or your family or friend, whoever you kind of feel comfortable yeah. with to discuss those things. So yeah, yeah, at threes, absolutely. you know, don't hold it all in, you know, make sure no. you got that out. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And sure. then we have our type fours. Yeah. So type fours, it, it, it really is just kind of leaning into that suffering and like leaning into those um, emotions like anger, sadness, shame. Um, Cause fours can also feel anger. Um, depending on the four, um, to a point in which they really, it's almost like they have blinders on. They can't see anything else, right? Like that's all they see. They're just like this. They're like, they're looking down with blinders on and they're just churning inside. And so they're in caught in that downward spiral and they're just they're but they're aware that they're in that spiral and they're longing to get out and they have no idea how to do it. And then they beat themselves up for not doing it. So that's a cycle that I see in fours and when they're in a very unhealthy place. Now, the thing about it, when I say that fours find themselves in therapy most, right? Usually therapists unknowingly reinforce this cycle right? Because they're like, oh, you're so aware of your negative emotions. Let's talk about all your feelings. Let's talk about all these things, right? Which in some cases can further emphasize, like um, keep them stuck right. in those feelings. Right. They can think about those feelings on their own for free, right? Like, mm -hmm. and they do, right? So um, that's, but that's before they hit that wall of um, just realizing that they need to do something different they can't stay they're missing out on life staying stuck in this longing and shame and sadness um that's usually either that or somebody else gets them into therapy but that's what <laughs> i find yeah right all right yeah well uh, so many amazing things that we discussed today i feel like uh my mind's kind of uh got a, a 
much better understanding of all these different types, but including myself, you know, because again, when you talked about each type, I felt like at least at some point in my life, whether that's currently or, you know, a couple of years ago, I've, you know, oh, felt yeah. those types of emotions or have acted yeah. those types of ways, you know, and yeah. again, uh, I think people need to understand that we will go through different phases of life where um, we are, you know, we'll, we'll resonate with each type of personality and Absolutely. we're supposed to. Um, and again, and or someone we know that does. So it's important oh, yeah. for us, the more we start learning about, um, you know, the more we l- learn about the Enneagram, uh, the more aware we're going to be, the better uh, outcomes we're going to have, not just personally, professionally, and then most importantly, obviously, in our relationships, uh, which yes. we need to show up uh, every day for. So Absolutely. for our, uh, you know, for our listeners out there, uh, what are some key takeaways that you would, would you want them to kind of uh, take home from this uh, podcast? And then uh, maybe giving uh, each type a little bit of a challenge to do uh, for the week to kind of start their uh, self uh, discovery journey, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm, I was really looking forward to this portion. I love the, I'm so looking forward to this portion of the podcast. So yeah. Yeah. key takeaways are always awareness. So if anything resonated with somebody, um, and they think, Oh, I might be a heart type. Um, and you know, just because you're a heart type doesn't mean you do feelings. Well, let me just put that out there. We all have our feelings, you know, issues. Um, yeah, just to kind of take a beat and reflect, right? Like, do you notice these themes in your life? Are they central? Right? Like, I, I think that's something that um, I would encourage anybody who's beginning an Enneagram journey to to just really lean into. Um, so I know you have some resources for people to kind of figure out what type they are. I know you're going to post those. So, so yeah, but I, I really think that's the first thing. Like, notice awareness is, like you said, like, that's the first muscle thing that we can control. So really like start to notice if you see resentment or leaning into suffering too much or numbness in your life, right? Like those tend to be uh, ways that heart types uh, show up in their individual special ways. So yeah. Um, So that's one thing. Um, And I do have, uh, I have a challenge per type, if that's okay for me to share. I love it. No, that's perfect. Individualize each type. I love that. Cool. Okay. So for type twos, I really want to challenge you if you know that you're a two um, when within the next week or two to um, get some intentional solo time. So you can't be around anyone else um, for maybe an hour or two. Um, Ideally, get out of your environment, like your home environment, uh, because there's too many things to do for other people in your home environment. Get out of your home environment and then try to spend that time focused on your thoughts, emotions, and dreams, like your internals. And notice how much you focus on other people, think about your relationships, or think about like things outside of yourself, right? Like other people. And every time that happens, redirect, but just become aware of how often your thoughts go outside. It'll be a lot. Yeah. don't be discouraged <laughs> it's 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 a it's an awareness exercise yes so yeah so that's that's for twos yeah so um, be compassionate most importantly be always. compassionate with you got yourselves uh, this yes. journey is when you're starting to discover who you are there it, there's a good side and there's obviously a shadow side that we all have and yes. each one of us has this side so when we start becoming more aware of those aspects that we are not so proud of per se it's important to just be compassionate. Yes, absolutely. And thank you. Cause that's really important. Um, try to do this non-judgmentally for sure. Um, yeah. So for threes, I want to encourage y'all to take maybe 30 minutes because I think that's as much as they'll be able to hang with <laughs> challenge me. If you think I'm wrong, um, uh, take about 30 minutes and do a mindful walk. So you're not allowed to bring like iPod, you're not allowed to bring like (laughs) a Kindle, (laughs) right? Yeah, yeah. you're not allowed to bring anything productive, no podcasts, nothing, right? No music, no. Um, And I want you to just look around and try to be present, orient yourself to what you see, hear, smell and feel during that 30 minute walk and try to be present and notice what's in the present. And then notice how hard that is if it's hard for you no no i like that i like uh, mindful walks are really really helpful yeah and Um, i think i think that's a helpful awareness tool 
for sure. For threes specifically. Uh, yeah. And for our four. fours. Yeah. I think, um, and this is going to be a hard one, but I want them to start uh, maybe a small list of heart centered gratitude. So I want them to keep maybe a gratitude journal, like two or three things they're grateful for every day for a week. So it doesn't have to take long, two to three minutes, but try to actively journal about what's good, like two or three bullet points about what's good about you or what's good about your life right now, right? It's going to feel very hard to actively notice what's good about, especially yourself, but also the life you're in. Um, And this isn't to suppress or deny feelings, but it's actually to round out emotional experience for a four and for them to notice how often they focus on kind of suffering and how they need to kind of work that muscle of rounding out their emotional experience to what what's good and noticing what we call their golden shadow, which is the good, the good things about them. That tends to be in their blind spot. So that's my challenge for force. Well, look, these are some great challenges and we would love for the audience and the viewers and listeners uh, out there to just come back next week and in the comment section or as the week's going on, let us know how these uh, challenges are going for you. You know, there is a lot of strength in community and to know that we're all doing this together and kind of like your own soul, you know, our own soul tribe. You know that, hey, uh, change isn't easy. Growth is not easy, but it doesn't have to be done alone. You know, no. and, you know, the most important thing to understand is that uh, we're all, you know, in this together and we're not meant to be doing everything on life by ourselves. So nope. uh, that's what's great about having a community and a community of like minded individuals. So please feel free to uh, let us know what's going on and how this is going for you all. And, yeah. uh, you know, thank you so much, Melinda, for joining us as our guest today. You're it's welcome. Awesome. It's just awesome. So excited to be us. here. Yeah, you and Joanne are just fantastic. Oh, um, yeah. And it's been a blessing to be able to work with you guys on this. And I'm sure all your patients have uh, feel the same way. And uh, hopefully our audience so. and viewers have gotten a lot out today. Thank you for tuning into the Alignus podcast, where we inspire a world of wellness and philanthropy. For more resources, and to stay connected to Alinus and the Alinus app release, please visit our website at www.alinusworld.com and make sure to follow our social media pages on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube with the handle at Alinus World. And make sure to check out Melinda's Instagram and TikTok at Inventera Counseling and take a look at her website, www.inventera.com. And until we meet again, stay aligned, stay connected, and stay anchored into the power of unconditional love. Namaste.